I'd like to welcome each one of you back to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, come with me if you would, to Hebrews, or rather Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2, I've just been reading in Hebrews in, in uh, study and preparation for this devotional today. And we will be going to Hebrews eventually, but we're going to Exodus chapter 2 right now as we've been looking at the early years of Moses. We've been looking as God prepares a deliverer um, for the nation of Israel. God is preparing us for what he has prepared for us. And it's important that uh, we, like Moses, learn that we don't, run a, we don't run ahead of God, nor do we lag behind him, but that we move in God's timing. So let's look more at the early years of the life of Moses today as we study in Exodus chapter 2. In verse 1 it says, And there went a man of the house, house of Levi, and took the wife, a daughter of Levi, and the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. So as we come into these verses yesterday, we saw uh, Amram being the father of uh, Moses and Jochebed, the mother of Moses, were of the tribe of Levi. And we saw some of the significance of that yesterday. Now, as we move into verse 2, we are going to be looking in somewhat um, at the courage that Jochebed had. And uh, before we do that, notice what it says here about Moses in verse 2. It says, And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw that he was a goodly child. Uh, in order to define, in order for us to help to understand this idea of a goodly child, let's go to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7, as we think about Moses being a goodly child. In Acts chapter 7, verse 20, and really you could read all the way down to verse 37 here, or 38. It says in Acts 7, verse 20, in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. So we see there the early months of the life of Moses. We see that the Bible says he was a goodly child. And then later on we see in verse 22, and this is we're going to see this in verse uh in Exodus 4, that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And uh, in, in Exodus 2, later on, we're going to see when he was a full 40 years old, it came onto his heart to visit the brethren, the children of Israel. So God is preparing Moses for what he is preparing for him. And that's important for us to realize and understand that, yes, friends, God has a job for each one of us. God has something that he wants us to do. But in the process of time right now, God is continually preparing us for that which is coming down the road for us. So we need to be very careful that we do not run ahead of God. And then we see here also that by faith, Moses was hid by his parents for three months. It says, when the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw that she was, he was a goodly child, she hid him for three months. And um, we see that in verse 2. And I want you to understand that it was, his, it was faith. It was not the beauty of a child, nor was it a mother's love for her child that caused him to hide Moses. It was faith in God. Uh, and God's plan for him that enabled them to do this. Say, so how do you know that? Well, keep your finger in Exodus 2 and come with me if you would to Hebrews chapter 11. This is where Hebrews comes in. Hebrews chapter 11. And let's pick it up in verse 23. It says there, by faith, Hebrews eleven twenty three. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents. So, what is it that caused his parents to hide him three months? Faith, because they saw that he was a proper child. That's the idea of the goodly child, and that they were not afraid of the king's commandment. So, there's another key there also. They were not afraid of the king's command. They understood that the command that the king had put out 
defy, defied the laws that God had already said, defied the nature of God. And friends, when government puts out commands that are contrary to God, then we must be involved in obeying God. And then it says in verse 24, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the whiz treasures of Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Once again, here we see this whole idea that he ought to obey God rather than men. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the spirit uh, sprinkling of blood lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians assaying to do were drowned. So the whole reason that Jochebed hid Moses was by faith. And it's important for us to see that. And that faith that was in Jochebed's life carried over into the life of Moses. Uh, we mentioned that it was a law that was contrary to the law of God. Um, we don't have time to go back there, but we've already looked at it. If you want to see it, you go back to Exodus chapter 1, verses 15 through 22. And we see that Pharaoh makes a command and Jochebed refuses to give in to a godless system that would have cost the life of her son. And oh, may God give us parents today who aren't afraid to take a stand for that which is right in these dark, sinful days that we live in. Men and women who demand more for their children than the world can give them. Parents who are willing to say that enough is enough. My child is going to learn the way of the Lord. Friend, we need people who will declare the same thing that Joshua declared for his family. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Friend, we need some courageous people in these times. Jochebed was a courageous woman and we need some courageous people in this world that we live in today. It's interesting to note that in our day, often the young people have more of a heart for God and his business than their parents do sometimes, and that's sad. But friends, it's a blessing when young folks live for God, but it's the parents who ought to set the example in courage and godliness for those who are following behind them. And that's exactly what we see Jochebed and Amram do with Moses. As your children watch you, do they see people that are courageous for the Lord? Do they see people who are courageous for standing for what is right and they will not be swayed by the things of the world? They are resisting the world and the direction that the world is going in and that they've determined, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Friend, does that describe you today? Is that where you're at? What I'm really asking is this. Do your children see Christ in you? Do your grandchildren see Christ in you? Do the people that are nearest to you see Christ in you and the difference that he makes in your life? Friends, the only way that that really happens is by faith. The faith of Amram and Jochebed was later revealed in Moses because Moses had seen that in their life and friends, God has called us to live by faith. And if we're going to be courageous in the world that we live in, if we're going to stand for what is right, then friends, it takes faith. We must not trust in ourselves, but we must trust in the Lord. That he will enable us to resist this world that we live in and to do what is right, not in the eyes of the world, but to do what is right in the eyes of God. May we have that same courageous spirit that Jochebed has in this passage. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May we be strong and courageous as Jochebed was here and as God was, as Joshua was instructed to do as well in Joshua chapter one. May we be a people of courage in this wicked world that we live in. Have a great day.